So today we're going to talk about uh, the ServiceNow Zurich release note and some of the new features that are included in the latest release. Um, I do believe we skipped Yokohama, so I didn't go back and kind of add all those in because there was like a ton. But uh, this will be pretty much uh, just the Zurich features and then anything else that uh, I thought was pretty important. Some of it kind of tied back into Yokohama, but. Um, so I'm Darren Laid. I'm a senior TC here in the HR pod, also an SDM. So some of you may know me, some may not. I think most of you do. But so uh, release dates, early availability started on July 31st. So uh, you know a few weeks ago. General availability, I can't find an actual date. One place says Q3, one says Q4. So I'm guessing it'll be Q4 at this point. That is uh, that is when people should be able to start upgrading to it. So here's the, the list of things that are on the agenda for today. Um, we're going to take a look at the multi-instance integration. That is a new feature. Uh, it's pretty interesting, pretty neat. Um, there must have been some use cases for it, and, and uh, we'll talk about that pretty good. Uh, case and knowledge management features. There's some, some key things in there that have, that have uh, been added. Employee center features. Lifecycle events features, those of you that have worked with lifecycle events pretty extensively are going to probably like this. Um, I couldn't find a ton of information on, you know, what it actually is doing, but stay tuned. Um, legal hold notification, and then a bunch of stuff in talent acquisition. So that seems to be somewhere that they really invested in in this, this latest release. So. All right, so the first one is HR, HR multi-instance integration. Basically what this is, is this is um, being able to share services if you're in a shared services model. Um, you know, you might have uh, an instance where consumers are using one ServiceNow instance, but all your agents are kind of working for a third party or another company managing all that stuff in a different instance. This will allow you to kind of work those tasks and information in between them. Um, so that's a that's a pretty interesting concept, uh, especially in the HR space. There's a there is as you can see at the bottom, there are some limitations to that. Um, first thing that comes to my mind is obviously security, but uh, you know hopefully they uh, they they put some ways of not uh, letting that get too crazy. But um, basically, what this is going to do, like I said, allow service providers and consumers to to have bi-directional workflows, so two different instances can talk to each other with. Uh, when fulfilling and processing HR requests. So this is going to increase security in, in the consumer instances and provider instances based on user roles. So you define roles and that allows the information to flow back and forth. This enables the employee to do service requests from their instance, like I said, and fulfill in another one. Um, you know, you can do HR tasks, approval tasks, document tasks, all that good stuff. It's going to allow them to create or complete assigned tasks via magic links. So there is magic involved here. Basically what that means is, as we'll see that again later, but basically what that means is it won't make the user log in um, and put in their password again. So a magic link, I think, is just a way of kind of uh, tokenizing their password and passing that through. So uni universal tasks are supported in some of this as well. So you can, if you're using universal tasks, that, that'll uh, be something that you can do. And really the backbone to this and the way that this works is by using Service Bridge. So not a new concept there, but um, new to the HR space as far as that goes. So one of the limitations that's pretty interesting is there are two COEs that are not allowed. Um, anybody got any guesses? Employee relations. Bingo. That is one. Um, obviously, you wouldn't want to push that information around too much. It's pretty sensitive. Any uh, any other guesses? The other one isn't security Maybe. related. It is uh, more complex, I guess. Oh, the... life cycle journeys. Life cycle, yeah. Gross. I was gonna say that would be weird to see through a service bridge. I don't know how that would work. Yeah, yeah. So that is um, the other the other one there. And then this is a this is a link to the KB that'll tell you all the limitations. So if you're looking at this for a customer, you know, go there first, and that'll that'll give you good idea of what's going on. Also, um, I put in links to like all the release notes here. So if you want to go read up more on these, I'll post this on the channel and do a little quick click there and not have to search around for stuff. 
So that's that's a pretty big one, I think. Uh, pretty nice feature. Hopefully uh, that's useful and, uh, and we get some people that need to use that. So one call out is Jimmy Vo actually did an overview of Service Bridge back in May. So if you're ever curious how Service Bridge works, there is a recording of that as well. So you can get an overview of Service Bridge. Yep. Cool. All right, so the next one is case knowledge management. This is just some of the key updates here. One of the, uh, the dog. first one is uh, HR ben benchmarks. So this will give you KPIs um, for, for some of your global benchmarks. And this allows you to obviously do all the cool KPI um, and, and HR benchmark stuff that you want to do. So just give you insights about you know peer-based industry, size, region, all those good things, um, really just just reporting uh, on another level. So um, the employee passport it allows you to move employee data between departments and agencies. So um, I don't know, Josh, we, we you know went through this kind of stuff at Customer Run, but there was uh, you know a lot of movement within that organization. So this is obviously something where they needed to be able to kind of pick up an employee and move them around with, with all their data. So um, pretty cool feature, I think. Um, survey responses. So now there's a link on the HR case to view survey responses without having to go dig for those uh, somewhere else. And then uh, personal data rights. This is, uh, you know, kind of some policy GDPR stuff around alumni, um, you know, some more of that data, that history data for an employee or somebody that may, may have worked there at some point. So. Just a little more, um, you know, robust policies around that. And again, there's uh, links to all the information if you guys want to go look at that. All right, so Employee Center um, wouldn't be an upgrade or release without lots of Employee Center updates. Um, I'll go through these kind of quick, probably won't read all of them, but now assist for employee experience. So um, obviously now assist is big stuff, all the virtual agent stuff, AI, that's getting, uh, you know, kind of more robust within the, the employee center. There's a browser extension now. So, um, you know, whatever browser you're developing in or whatever, you can now use the, the extension to access some of that stuff a little bit quicker. Enhanced request experience. So this one's gonna be like just better searching, keyword searching, some more dynamic and scalable stuff, like it says here to allow your admins and all that to, uh, to I guess, be able to navigate a little better and, and get people to the right spots. Uh, portal performance optimization. So, you know, you'll be able to uh, put some controls around pages loading and, and some of that other, uh, I like how to say lazy load, but uh, while you do some of that stuff, high traffic experience. So looks like they're invest, investing in, you know, making the portal a little bit quicker, more efficient, all that kind of stuff. Uh, taxonomy and connected content. This one was pretty interesting. So um, taxonomy, Obviously, you know, it can get uh, get a little bit out of control and maintenance of it can get a little heavy. So this is going to help kind of streamline that um, and, and hopefully take some of that effort out. Mega menu load. Um, this is going to uh, speed up some more of that other mega menu type stuff. If you've got, you know, lots of depth or, or lots of choices, sometimes it gets a little bit slow. And then um, notifications for employee center enhancements. This is just a better notification system, I think, for doing that in the portal. And then quick start tests. So um, you can do some more. They just added some more quick starts to it. So it allows you to kind of get up to speed a little more quickly on, on all your testing after you uh, uh, go through an upgrade. All right, so lifecycle events. One of the things that um, they've added here is that they miss logging. So anybody that's worked in this knows that Troubleshooting lifecycle events has been pretty painful at times. Um, I don't know if this is going to be a huge, huge impact. I'd have to see how good it is, but at least it's something, right? Without having to go dig through the normal logs and workflows and script includes and all that jazz. Um, looks very straightforward. There is essentially a plugin that you install, uh, a property that you go set, and this is the, the, the three levels, I guess, that you, you get to choose from where you can set the logging. Um, and then what that occurs after that is there is much like uh, workflow context, there'll be a related link on a case where you can see uh, the lifecycle event logs. 
So pretty cool feature, hopefully. We shall see. All right, so next one is legal hold notification. Um, sounds kind of like it's just a notification, but it's actually kind of an app. Um, and what this does is, this is really, I guess, something that was lacking in, in legal hold. I don't know, I haven't worked in it much, but I guess people being in the know throughout the processes of legal hold um, was something that I guess they, they kind of got some feedback on. But it uh, looks like they put in you know, some robust features around that that'll help uh, everybody kind of be in the know on what's going on throughout the, the legal hold workflows. So um, you can see there's new things like um, create legal hold matters, assign custodians, um, issue notices, track acknowledgements, and then um, compliance. So it's almost kind of like they put, um, kind of like you can do policy acknowledgements and things like that. Took some of that and put it in the legal hold alongside of it to, to kind of help that, that whole process. Two things that it does is it enhances, you know, the custodian engagement. Sometimes they might not have known what was going on or kind of just not to, not really uh, engaged there. And then uh, reduces some of the, the the legal risk when people are following up or completing processes. So. so this one ties between HR and LSD, where it creates legal matters. Now, do you know if it does anything with the assets that need to be legally held? Um, I did not drill that far into it. We'd have to go. Take a look, really. Cool. Looks like a COE session for the future. Yeah. Yep. Does, um, that, re does that require the legal service management stuff then? So it's, it is raising matters. It, it so it's a uh, integration between HR and legal. Uh, so a matter okay. is a legal matter. So legal yep. matter management is what gets generated, which is just a processed legal matter. Um, it's, one of these, it's one of these better together things. Next one, Applicant Center. So this is where we're getting into talent acquisition. Um, lots of new features here, pretty cool ones. The first one is an Applicant Center. So this is essentially a portal where you can send uh, applicants and uh, kind of help them through the um, recruitment, hiring, interview process. We'll see a bunch of other pieces that kind of tie into this here in a little bit. But essentially there is a, um, an area where they can go apply for jobs, see all the um, jobs that they've applied for, and they can see things like, obviously you can see in the picture here, they can see the progress of those applications. And I, one of the cool features I thought was there was quick links at the bottom, which, um, you know, if you're applying for a job, you might go see what the company's all about. So you can research to find out what their culture is about. Um, and what this allows them to do is just post that stuff right there where user can go in and look at that pretty quickly. So looks pretty neat. Um, I, I think it's uh, definitely uh, making things a little bit better in that process. So um, it also, um, you know, allows you to do scheduling and, and things like that for your interviews. And there's ways that, um, you know, as the owner of, of the recruiting system or, or whatever here, you can allow them to either, you know, pick slots or you can actually you know, do the scheduling and, and there is some, from what I understand, some calendar integration where you can look for free time and stuff like that. Pretty neat, um, but it just kind of kind of helps connect all that stuff together. All right, the next one is the hiring application. So um, this is part of Manager Hub. This is just going to help streamline that hiring process. It's allow managers to go in, put in uh, job recs, um, look at people that are applicants that are interviewing and, and kind of tie some of that stuff together. Uh, makes a little bit, uh, you know, less searching for them without having to go through different areas in the platform. So like a little, like a little uh, portal for them to, to look at things. All right. Um, next is interview management. So this is, this is a, a big recruiting tool, I guess, that they've set up. And, you know, this is going to, like I said earlier, it's going to allow them to kind of save a lot of time and, and, you know, efficiency throughout that process. So, like it says here, it's going to allow them to schedule and manage interviews, um, configure the phases and kind of the workflow of an interview, uh, and then give them a, a, a quick glance at where, where each applicant is in that process. So those things, you know, obviously sometimes they get lost and it's hard to manage and you got to go look at emails and and uh, you know phone calls and all the other stuff that you've done outside of a, a you know system. So 
this will actually pull in data from different data sources. Like I said, the calendar availability um, and, and scheduling is a little bit better now. Um, it can give you reminders and notifications. So you don't have to go and, you know, every day and say, hey, when's the last time I followed up with so-and-so? Um, so pretty cool. Um, and it also allows, you know, feedback. I forgot to put that in the applicant one too. There's a way for uh, applicants to message directly with the recruiter through that portal without having to use like email or, uh, you know, a phone call. So, all right. And then this all uh, kind of ties into a recruitment workspace. So this is, um, you know, all these pieces that we kind of talked to are, are going to be accessible through there. Um, it also gives them some, some KPIs and a dashboard to look at that, uh, allows them to collaborate with you know, managers, applicants, uh, pretty much everybody in, involved in the processes there, and really just gives them, you know, a, one space to kind of work through with, with all the, the features that they've added. And then, you know, the kind of the key here is they're better, better monitoring and, and tracking. So, and one last, I think this might be the last piece of this one. Um, oh, there's two more. So the talent profile, um, this is basically allowing you to put more data to, to a user or an applicant or employees, contingent workers, alumni, basically all the different types of users that you could have in HR or in the system. Um, and it allows you to kind of put some, some more information and data around them to create pools and, you know, allows you to kind of, I guess, filter and look for um, certain things about people. It, it also allows you to know, put some history or tracking so you'll be able to tie like, you know, some of their the past requests or cases and all that kind of good stuff in there in one spot without having to go look at their profile record, maybe even have to go to the user record or go look at cases and search for them. I believe this is just supposed to kind of tie as much as possible within the system to a, to a person. And then uh, kind of the last feature, um, can't go through ServiceNow without talking about AI, but, um, in the hiring experience, there is um, some AI support for creating job requisitions. So um, basically the, the agent allows you to, to pick uh, three or four categories here and go search some of the data in the system and look for um, you know, some of the, the, the configurations and data and values that you have and create um, job requisitions based off of that. Hopefully saving them some time on on writing uh, these and, and, and making them a little more consistent. So, all right, not too bad. That is all.